Chapter 21 deals with patent agents. Patent agents are the professionals who can practice before the patent office. They can file patent application, prosecute them and represent the inventor or the assignee for all matters and purposes before the patent office. Now there is a register of patent office which is a patent agents which is maintained by the controller which includes the names of all the practicing patent agents. Online version of the register is also available at the patent office website. Now this comprises of all the people who are active. In fact you will find that some of the names have been removed because they have not paid the renewal fee and so the register of patent agents maintained by the controller has the names, addresses and relevant particulars of the patent agent. So that the register because it is online becomes a tool for any person who wants to engage a patent agent to know whether that person is a practicing patent agent. Now the qualifications are to become a, pa a registered patent agent. One, you should be a citizen of India, should have completed 21 years and should have a degree in science, engineering or technology from a recognized university. Now science, engineering and technology includes quite a lot of courses and it includes courses on uh, purely on computer applications and computer administration. So it is a big basket of things and this also corresponds to the work that the patent office does. Patent office does work on science, engineering and technology. In fact, the patent examiners are specialized based on different streams of science, engineering and technology. So, so as, for, as long as you have a degree in science, engineering or technology, you could, you could take the examination. Now this is the preliminary qualification, citizenship, age and uh, degree in science, engineering or technology. So in addition to this, the person should have passed the qualifying examination prescribed for that purpose or for a total of not less than 10 years functioned either as examiner or discharge the functions of the controller but cease to hold any capacity at the time of making the application. So the only way you can become a patent agent, registered patent agent without taking the exam is by having spent at least 10 years in the patent office either as an examiner or as a controller and then giving up the job to become a patent agent. So, so and there is a fee requirement. So if to sum up all the requirements, the person should be a citizen of India, should have reached across 21 years of age, should have a degree in science, engineering and technology, should have taken the examination, patent agent examination and qualified it or should have in the alternative should have at least 10 years of experience in the patent office. In addition to that, so, so this the, the educational qualification and the exam is one requirement because you need to satisfy both and should have paid the fee, the, the registration fee and the renewal fee as prescribed. A person who has been registered as a patent agent before the commencement of the Patents Act shall be entitled to continue as a patent agent. Now before the amendment, a, a person could take the examination even without having a degree in science and technology. So that, now that requirement has been removed. Now what are the rights of a patent agent? 127 tells us that uh, the person has a right to practice before the controller, to prepare all document, transact all business and discharge such functions as may be prescribed with any proceeding before the controller. So they can practice before the controller and they can prepare documents and transact the business of getting a patent. Now um, 128 describes certain details of the functions of a patent agent. All pat applications and communications to the controller under this act may be signed by the patent agent authorized in writing in this behalf by the person concerned. So once an authorization is given to a patent agent, every other communication that needs to be sent to the controller can be signed by the patent agent. So once a form of authorization that is form 26 is filed in favor of a patent agent, then the patent agent need not get the signature of the inventor 
or the assignee for any other matter. Everything else can be signed by the patent agent. So, the patent agent acts as the agent of the person filing the application. There are some restrictions on the practice. Uh, now, the restrictions are that no person can hold himself out as a patent agent unless he and his partners, partners are so registered. So, if you are a single person or an association of individuals, you cannot show yourself as a partnership unless all the partners are also a patent agent. You can't say that you can't call your firm name and say that registered patent agents unless everybody in that firm is also a registered patent agent. Now, no company or body corporate shall practice describe itself as patent agent or permit itself to be described or held out. So, patent agent is something that is tied to an individual and not to a company or a body corporate. Now, the practice of the patent agent, we saw practice before the controller in the earlier section. Now, that is mentioned here in detail. Now, what does the practice include? Applying for and obtaining patents in India or elsewhere, preparing specifications and other or other documents for the purpose of this act and of the patent law of any other country, giving advice other than of a scientific and technical nature as to the validity of patents and their infringement. Now, patent agent though they require to be people who have a degree in science, engineering and technology, they cannot give advice on the technical or scientific nature. The advice they give pertains to the validity of patents or their infringement and there we are talking about the legal aspect of validity and legal aspect of infringement. Now, they can be removed from the register and if their name is removed, they can be restored to. Now, the provision is given 130 deals with the details of how that can be done and the power of the controller to refuse to power, the controller also has a power to refuse to deal with certain persons as patent agents. The details are given and 132 deals with the saving provision. Now, we had already mentioned the only person who can represent a client before the controller is a patent agent, but there are two exceptions to that provision. Obviously, an applicant for a patent can do everything that is required to file, prosecute and to get patents granted. So, this is the do it, your, do it yourself way. If an applicant feels that the applicant wants to file a patent on their own, they can do it. That's so, the applicant for a patent can draft any specification appear before the controller and, and deal with the patent office for all purposes. So, the applicant is given the power to do it even without a patent agent and an advocate not being a patent agent from can take part in a hearing before a controller on behalf of a party who is taking part in proceedings under this act. So, advocates who are registered under the Advocates Act can appear before the controller where the controller calls for a hearing and we had seen that there are many instances where the controller can call for a hearing. So, the party who is expected to appear before the controller can authorize an advocate to appear. So, these are the two exceptions to, to the people who deal with the patent office. An advocate can appear in a hearing and a patent application can, can do anything from drafting to appearing before the controller. Now, there are some rules on patent agents. Now, the rules are supplemental details covering certain aspects of the act. Now, what are the details that are contained in the register? Now, application, how does the person make an application for registration as a patent agent? Form 22 is a relevant application. There are some details on the examination. There are two papers and a viva OC and, and details about that. What is the number of uh, amount of marks you need to get in aggregate? Then, then the certificate of registration that is issued to a patent agent, rule 111 covers that. And issue of duplicate certificates, 111A. 112 deals with the details to be included in any application for registration of a patent agent that is filling of form 22. 113 
deals with the registration of patent agents under section 126.2, the details of how the procedure happens. 114 talks about the disqualifications like scientific advisors, there are certain uh, things that can disqualify a patent agent if he has been adjudged by a competent court to be of unsound mind, if he is an undischarged insolvent or a discharge solvent who has not obtained a certificate, they, they tend to be similar. Additionally, you have being legal practitioner who has been professional of who has been guilty of professional misconduct or being a chartered accountant being guilty of negligence or misconduct. So, these two additional requirements are there. Then 115 deals with the payment of fees, the fees are mentioned in, uh, in the first schedule and 116 on removal of the name of a patent agent, the circumstances in which a person's name can be removed. Now, default of payment of fees is something that is a prominent reason why the name of a patent agent is removed from the register and when the patent agent dies, his name is again removed. Now, 117 deals with the restoration of name of so persons who were, whose names were removed and the form 23 is the form that is used for that and 118 deals with the alteration of names in the register. Now, if some detail needs to be supplemented, change of address, change of email ID, telephone number, there are provisions to take care of that so that the register stands updated. Now, the controller also we had seen that has the power under section 131 to refuse to deal with or recognize patent agent. The details of that is given in 119, rule 119 and rule 120 calls for the publication of names of, of patent agents registered under the act. 